the reason I think that the reason that the whole food based products for the skin are not the best is because our skin doesn't have digestive organ. It doesn't have ability to break it down and utilize just the things that it needs. So it becomes sensitized and reactive to those products. I totally get that. Very interesting. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Functional Medicine Coaching Moms Podcast, where simplifying healthy lifestyle change for moms is the only goal. We are thrilled to have Marina Skye on the show today. She is a functional medicine practitioner and an aesthetician and the founder of HEAL, a wellness center and spa in New Jersey that helps people find the root cause of their skin and health issues. She is a mom of two boys who are in college. This episode is for you if you're interested in a functional medicine or holistic approach to skincare. Marina has helped clients clear acne, eczema, dark spots, rosacea, fine lines, dullness and dryness, and more so they can look and feel their best. Two life-changing events in Marina's personal life led her to founding HEAL. First, she was able to use holistic treatments to resolve her own digestive and skin issues when visits to her doctor did not yield results. And the second, after her mom was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, Marina was able to help her mother avoid major surgery and recover without prescription medication. So Marina, thank you so much for coming on the show today. After reading your bio, Raquel and I were so curious because it seems like there's a digestion and a skin connection. And we were amazed how you were able to heal your own skin and gut issues. And then helping your mom avoid the surgery and prescriptions with the Crohn's disease really blew our minds on that because that sounds amazing that you were able to do that. So we were wondering if you could start by sharing a little bit about your journey. Thank you for a great introduction. But yeah, it was it was not an easy one and it all started in my teen years like it does for a lot of people I had a lot of stress in my life and also my skin showed which I didn't really connect at that time to each other but I did have digestive issues as well but my biggest problem of course as a teenager is was the skin and I had cystic acne it was really quite bad and I was in college and it got worse but with the I believe that doctors and medicine was the way to go at that time I didn't really know any other options Right. Uh, and I'm talking about 35 years ago. So the years of antibiotics and even some a course of Accutane didn't resolve it permanently. It resolved it temporarily. It came back a year later mm. and after the Accutane and I was done with it because it was affecting my health even more. And then I, at that time, I was already out of college and learning other approaches. I was always drawn to holistic approach and I went to all these little uh, whole, well natural stores that right. had wellness components and then they had a little mini library and I would look up all the books and look up acne treatments and someone mentioned to me that you know maybe diet even though I asked the doctors many times would the diet be an issue and they said no of course maybe chocolate but so I and that's when I went dairy free cold turkey and started learning more and more and researching it and that was not my career I was becoming an expert in it and then wanted to help when I started being improvement in my skin and my gut and my overall health I wanted to help Help other people too. When the opportunity came, I changed my career completely. I went back to, I got my functional medicine nutritionist certification. My skin was still a big mess after years of topical, whatever, dry and agents and mm -hmm. antibiotics. My gut was also a mess. It took a long time for me to reverse things, but my skin was still damaged. A recommendation of a friend, I decided I want to learn more about skin products and got my, got back to school, got my physician license. And I always believed in this holistic approach. So so that was a way for me to learn about skincare, skincare products. Mm -hmm. And I love the hands-on. So it became my goal to combine and offer something different and educate other people about gut skin connection and holistic approach for skin problems. And not just acne that was my problem, but also eczema, rosacea, psoriasis, right. other things, sensitive skin. And premature aging, of course, is also, mm -hmm. <laughs> also part of it. It's yes. all a reflection. The skin doesn't exist as its own organ connected to the body as a lot of Western medicine may look at that that way but it's always a reflection of what's going on inside and that, that was, was a huge piece for me how about your mom 
So in the midst of that, my mom was diagnosed with Crohn's. It was kind of all of a sudden, end up in the hospital. And even though she's in a different state, I was able to see her within a couple of days and be here there. And it took a lot of arguing with doctors and because <laughs> they really? wanted to do emergency surgery with Crohn's. They usually cut out the pieces that, and I was still kind of at the beginning of my functional medicine career, but I knew that there's a better way and healing my own gut issues. Um, I knew that there was probably something I could do. And I actually had at that time, I did help one other client with Crohn's who was on the medication stopped working. So we managed to get her. So you had like a little tiny experience is what I'm gathering right when this was happening with your mom with someone else. But I got to say like, wow, that took a lot of like, that was just a very courageous thing yeah. to tell the doctors like, no, you're not going to do surgery on my mother right now and stepping in like that. Were you I mean, that's you have like, because I would be like, okay, I get that feeling in a similar situation currently right now with my own mom. But you have that like little piece of you that was like, what if I'm not doing the right thing? Yeah, and yeah it, what if yeah. you this, don't this have this it right. hurt my mother, mm -hmm. you know, or something yeah. like that? It was scary, especially right. that my brother didn't know anything about it. And he kind of goes on with whatever doctors recommend. My dad was on my case as well. I was scared. So you were having with. battles. Of course, because your mom, you know, you messed yeah. up with double <laughs> trouble, and, right? <laughs> right. And you were still a student. You weren't even like an official doctor yet. No, I was practicing. Oh, you but, were practicing but at I that point. I just didn't have as much experience Got with it. Crohn's. And it was, you know, pretty severe for her right. being in the hospital and like feeding tube. And so it was a little scary because it was sudden, but I just had such a strong conviction after going through what I went through. And actually, to be honest, my mom was never really fully supportive of my diet changes. And she thought that whatever I was avoiding was all in my head and whatever. But I knew that it was working for me. So the funny thing is after this experience, Experience. It, it took her a few months. It wasn't a quick recovery, but sure. it, I told the doctors, if we have an issue, if she does need a surgery, we'll come back in whatever, in a week or two weeks. It's not that urgent. She started getting better. I put her on the diet, gave her some supplements. To and when her. you say diet, what kind of diet was it? Well, I put her, well, she was pretty blocked with the, from the Crohn's. So it was a lot of broth and gluten, dairy free, sugar free, like a lot of cleaned up her mm -hmm. diet significantly mm -hmm. and put her on, she also has the difficulty swallowing pills. So I had to mm. put her on a lot of powder supplements that were like soothing and healing. Mm. So a month later, she was still she was better, but she wasn't still not gaining weight, she lost a lot of weight by not eating. So my dad was kind of giving me a little hard time on about that. But because she was getting better, actually, that's what I was saying. The funny thing, she became my biggest believer, supporter, because she saw a lot of other symptoms that she thought were just normal or just little new symptoms that went away with the diet and wow. the healing and so she even to this day she said you saved my life which is changing my diet and now she's very strict with the gluten dairy free still has a sweet tooth but she's doing great she's not on medication she's um, in her 80s and <laughs> she's wow really that is amazing. such an inspiring story because i mean you hear so much about crohn's disease i feel like i'm hearing more and more and that's just such a hopeful story for people because i think sometimes conventional medicine doesn't always have like the best solution you know, at, at the end of the day, when you talk about her being like gluten free and dairy free, but is, is she still like with these the changes that you made? Is she still can eat meat and fish or chicken, yeah, or yeah. is not just a complete plant based? She's not as restricted. She still has well. So I believe in very personalized approach. Yeah, even within the functional I do medicine. Too. Yeah. So for her, other foods also bother her. She's fine with meats and fish, but certain nuts and seeds are too difficult for her to digest mm -hmm. so she has to be mm -hmm. careful with certain things oh, besides wow. gluten and dairy but gluten and dairy is this big one and it's not the same for everyone so i'm a little hesitant to say well everybody should do this of course yeah <laughs> because... right and like you said it's personalized and so there you know it, i'm gathering that there is a real connection between skin and digestion <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly right so that's really interesting so when you are treating your patients in your practice is you're looking at their like their skin like if they have asthma or like whatever like even like maybe
maybe fine lines or but and then do you do like are you also like hey what's your diet look like is that like a part of the whole process yes even when i do a skincare treatment it's not necessarily just lay down and forget about <laughs> about the world i talk <laughs> to them about <laughs> which sometimes you know it's yeah, needed absolutely but I, I get it i do i'll bring up the diet especially the first time if they open to that and they want to have a holistic approach i will bring up the diet and lifestyle and products and toxins and everything it's all part of it got it you know it's got not it just yeah if you could take us through a little bit about like what it's like to come to your heel and how, what experience you would have as opposed to going to maybe a traditional spa say so i do both i do the nutrition functional medicine evaluations and consultations as well as skincare treatment although all my skincare treatments are non-toxic with the health of the skin as a priority so the healthier the skin the better the result whether it's problem skin or agent skin whatever the problem may be but i also learned to look for signs and you know our body our skin talks to us if we know how to right so in light of what you're speaking about for those of us who are nervous or curious about botox and fillers and what is your take on it and i just want everyone to know our listeners that we are not judging anyone who has opted for that um route by the way but we'd just love to hear your i'm just curious like what is she going to say about this <laughs> Well, I personally do not support Botox and fillers. I've never done it myself. I would never recommend it. Again, I'm not judging anybody for sure. doing it either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that it's a good option for either anti-aging or otherwise. It's uh, long term. It has a lot of side effects. Like what? Um, not only for the skin, but for the body. Mm. Well, besides the fact that it's toxic and, mm -hmm. you know, your body has to process it out mm. and affect the liver it also could um, create it's almost like the atrophy for the muscle that's how it works it makes the muscle not work mm. so even if you're trying to make a wrinkle you know move your face it doesn't move therefore it looks like you have no wrinkle but it atrophies the muscles and if you continue doing it it atrophies it completely where like if you had a cast on your arm for a year and or your leg and then you started using it you would have a problem you would have to go through physical therapy therapy to regain function of those muscles that haven't right. been moving. So the same thing. And on the face, when the muscles are not moving or holding, the face could actually droop because um. the, the muscles are not holding up. They lost that strength. So after a long, maybe not right away, right? But with years of using the Botox, the muscle could lose their elasticity and just are drooping. And it's really not impossible, but very, very difficult to reverse that. Right. And what about the fillers? There are some fillers that are probably better than others okay. but again the fillers have some toxic materials in them is they could bunch up and look weird oh, for right. a while yeah. i've seen mm. some of that yeah where they need to stay that's, <laughs> mm. that's, that's a problem that's a so then like what problem. could be what would be an alternative i guess to this like if we if we don't want to do these things but we right. still right. want to look good as we age we're we're trying yeah. to look good so what should we do <laughs> or, well everybody and that's the thing there are other options right it may not be as drastic or as a quick fix as botox and fillers but there are other options that are natural and holistic and also that have the same effects yeah. that have similar yeah, effects very similar effects. and oh. a lot of it is inside out as well and you mm. can't be lazy and you have to do take care of things both from inside and outside yes do work what i also wanted to mention there's such thing as graceful aging you know it's okay to have a wrinkle and a little bit of gray hair or a lot yes. of gray hair to show your know, wisdom i in my culture so growing up in moldova and in europe we actually respected the elders and didn't have that obsession with with looking youthful into your season 60s it was okay you actually respected for your experience and yeah I think it proud and happy. Yeah, I feel like it promotes like low self esteem. Like for women, I think it promotes like low self esteem. And I know what you mean. Like in the United States, I mean, there was a time I think it's happening less and less. I do, but where women would lie about their age. Can you imagine like yeah, lying yeah. about your age? I just did a video about they say 57 is the new 37, but I say <laughs> I'm 57. This is my chronological Own age. It. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Right? Own it. My biological age is different than my chronological age. And that is like what I'm able to control, like what I'm able to do. But I don't, you know, I feel like, and listen, it's very challenging. It's not easy, especially in the United States where beauty is all this, you know, and just, you know, I'm starting to just let my own, and this is my <laughs> choice. Just yeah. because I was just tired of dyeing my hair because I was literally dyeing it to cover my grays. And again, I am not judging anyone because sometimes I look at pictures of myself with highlights and I'm like, oh, I kind of miss that. And maybe I'll do it, you know, but again, I don't know. But for now, I'm just on a mission. I have daughters and I just feel like, you know, like you said, we want to, there's a thing called aging gracefully. And I think that I do have a fear about getting older and you know what's happening to my skin and all that and however on the other side of the coin I also acknowledge that you know I have a value for life being in this other half of my life being 57 you know yeah I really as Marina value. just said all that wisdom that we have that we didn't have yeah. so that's good yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's really, really important. And it's interesting that you're saying that some of these, you know, taking care of like the some of the stuff that you do there that is away from Botox and fillers that there there is a do work portion, but there are similar, like Kristen said, we still, you know, we want to try and look our best, obviously. Of course. Yes, everybody wants. To yeah, what could what does that look like? Best. Yeah, well, there, are, of course, you are what you eat. <laughs> right. So as a nutritionist, I would say that inside out is a huge component you know you have if you put junk in your body it will show up on the skin and not just problem skin but as a premature agent mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so you could high quality nutrients antioxidants right like yeah all the hydration stress management hormone balancing everything comes into play when it comes to skin so especially so with, when women go through menopause their skin loses luster and all that because of the hormonal changes Right. Mm -hmm. So, and so what balancing was she... the hormones also. Okay, balancing the hormones. And then like, let's say she's laying on your table and she's like, okay, I'm not going to do Botox, but what can we do? <laughs> well, <laughs> like tropically. Uh, uh, yes, topically. So daily skincare is super important. It's like brushing teeth. You could go to a dentist, you know, every six months and get like deep cleaning. Right. But your daily routine really makes a huge difference. Mm. So everything from, and not every everybody is super user with like five different steps of day and night what they're what they do but it does make a difference and wow. good quality products also make a huge difference can you right? tell us and a little bit about just, that too because i worry sometimes what's in the products right like the skincare right, exactly. it's hard to find and understand what would be a cleaner product so can yeah, we like just, you just said, share yeah okay. like Kristen, you had asked how do we know what are safer brands to choose from so well i work with professional brands so it's a little challenging. There's so many, hundreds mm -hmm. and hundreds of brands. Well, you can't always believe the label. Mm. That's, and that's true with both nutrition and food and, and skincare products, especially with skincare products because FDA doesn't regulate them. So they don't have to put all the ingredients on the label. Wow, that's They can sad. hide some under other ingredients. And the biggest thing to look for, of course, are fragrances and preservatives and coloring. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's still, and just because it has so unlike with food, just because it has a long name doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing because with skincare products, those are scientific names mm -hmm. for different extracts and herbals. Oh. But yeah, any paraben or basically fragrance or if it looks so the manufacturers of skincare products, they know that the first thing you will do is put it on your skin and smell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if it looks good and smells good, it might not be <laughs> good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, counterintuitive. <laughs> <laughs> but the key is also not to fall for the hype mm. and go for just something that everybody talks about because those like retinols you know like it could be or even vitamin c you know it's not the same vitamin c 
in all the products. I have seen where a vitamin C, a cheaper version of vitamin C serum had things from the cheaper version would be made from citrus and citrus could have a detrimental effect on the skin when combined with sunlight. So you could burn your skin by putting vitamin C that's made out of citrus. Mm -hmm. What would you be looking for? The vitamin C made from what? My point is, if it's too good to be true, if it's like a cheap version of vitamin C, it's probably not the best kind. I guess for like just the average person, like I would be like, all right, well, how would I know if it's like, because to me, vitamin C citrus, that makes sense. But I also get what you're saying now. I'm like, okay, so if I'm looking at a vitamin C serum, if it says it's made from citrus, I would say, okay, this is not good. And they don't always tell you. So it's a very, very complicated world of product. And I'm not a chemist who have all the answers, but I know from experience and seeing other people come with issues that a lot of products could be, you can buy for a commercial on the label, but they could be actually creating more problems than solving. Right, right. So you help people kind of decipher that when they come to see you to kind of get to the bottom of their skincare routine and... yes. I could see in a lot of uh, women's skin is very sensitive. Well, another problem, so within a holistic uh, world, there's a misunderstanding, I think, that if it's made from food, it's good for the skin. In that, I used to think the same way because I thought it was, you know, whole food, whole Mm -hmm. right food made is good for my body, good for my skin. And after going through my esthetician school, I understand, and I've seen other people going through that as well. I realized that products made from from whole foods are not always good for the skin. Very interesting. I actually had one of my first lines of products that I had was made from foods and extract. Mm-hmm. But I saw a lot of reaction in the skin from that line than other more pharmaceutical grade, not pharmaceuticals, but pharmaceutical grade extract that hmm. are more pure and active. So wow. the reason I think that the reason that the whole food based products for the skin are not the best is because our skin doesn't have digestive organs. It doesn't have ability to break it down and utilize just the things that it needs. So it becomes sensitized and reactive to those products. I totally get that. Very interesting. Okay. And that's like, that's just been an observation. And I see a lot of women who try to do the right thing and use food based skincare products, and they have very reactive, sensitive skin. Wow. So, a redness, wow. like you could see. So if someone has a lot of redness, and maybe not true for everybody, but if uh, someone has a lot of redness, or uh, they come out of the shower, and it, or they put something on and all feels kind of tingly or reactive, mm-hmm. or they can't get rid of this dryness or something mm-hmm. not to even mention breakout so the skin's job is, is very different than our digestive system so the skin's job is to protect from invaders from the outside from bacteria and uh, toxins and also it's excretory organ so it lets out toxins but if there are seven layers in the skin and it's like a brick wall right so it's hard for the product to penetrate deeply into the skin unless it's designed and formulated to do that and if you just mash a strawberry it's not necessarily going to do that okay so we're going to stick to whole foods eating whole foods for our skin (laughs) but not necessarily putting it on our skin that's a huge thing that i just learned because i never really thought about that or realized that in an interest of time marina we wanted to ask you what are two simple things a mom could do today to improve the health of their skin or their family's skin so the biggest thing that I would recommend, and I know it's a somewhat a controversial topic in the holistic world in crunchy moms too, but the sunscreen, a physical sunscreen on the face is probably the best anti-aging product you could use. And I understand the whole controversy with vitamin D and exposure to light and maybe expose the rest of your body to the light. Mm-hmm. But if you want to have an, a natural approach to anti-aging or prevent premature aging, I would use physical sunscreen doesn't have chemicals every single day even in the winter because uva light that that the aging part of the sunlight will penetrate deeper into the skin and through the clouds and through the glass and Mm. will create that dna damage that will create wrinkles long term and when you say um, when you say a non-chemical sunscreen like are you talking about the mineral based ones or what would be the best solution 
zinc oxide is a good ingredient makes the product very like pasty white mm-hmm. yes yes so there are some products that are formulated to go on smoothly and it's almost like a whipped cream do and, you have any um, of those products in your yes yeah there's i have about four or five different physical sunscreens including a powder that has a sunscreen that's really great for the summer because you could just reapply that's the, i think the biggest issue with especially women who wear some makeup in the middle of the day you're supposed to reapply apply sunscreen every you know two hours who's gonna do that on top of makeup and Mm -hmm. everything so yeah there are other options like powder where you could put on the powder so they also have a little bit of tint that will make it not tasty white and it will blend with the skin easily and then you could reapply with that powder too great so there are a lot of different good healthy non-toxic options for sunscreen great so that and actually the best way to tell how aged your face skin is compared to your other part is to look under your bicep like in that area right here mm-hmm. and this is how your uh, skin that's not sun damage is looks like and that's how your skin should look like but because of the sun damage it looks very different mm-hmm. so if you want to wow. compare your aging to <laughs> on the skin on the face versus the underarm you'll see that it's because of the sun i'm doing that, that as soon as always... i get off here <laughs> yeah i'm afraid to do that but <laughs> i'm gonna I'm like, check Uh-oh. that out what was it how is it guys <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> and I made that mistake too. But yeah, in the winter, you know, you see cloudy and you think, well, it, there's no sun, but it's right. still... It's the UV. It's, it's still UVA. UVA. Yeah, UVA right, are still penetrating through the glass and clouds and even indoors you know, or driving in the car. Mm. Okay. And did you have any other tips then for us for our, So sunscreen we got, and we're going to make it mineral-based <laughs> and clean ingredients. We're going to go for that, yes. the zinc. <laughs> Sorry, it was extensive. But so the other <laughs> tip I would say is do one of the tips from inside out, right? Mm. Um, eat the rainbow of colors. And that's the easiest thing to think about. We need all kinds of antioxidants. Purple ones are the most difficult ones. But try to eat at least one of each colors. And I'm not talking about M&Ms, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> but... <laughs> One of each color is food that every day that will create that all day. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank absolutely. It's Thank important because so it's easy to get stuck. Yeah. With your food choice. So that's great. Yeah. Yes. That's just the easy way to track your. Perfect. Thank you, Marina. You can find out more about Heal by visiting www.healnj.com. And also connect with Marina on Instagram and Facebook at Heal and J. We will link all of this in the show notes. And I want to add that Marina is offering our listeners a 15% discount on a first treatment or consultation. You can visit her website for her services. And I am in New Jersey and I will be checking it out, Marina, because I could use some help as I'm getting older. And these were great tips today. Yeah, maybe we can both go together. Yes, Kristen. that might be really fun. Yeah, we might yeah, have to do that. We can do a, an, a field trip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for being Thank with you, us thanks. and we'll see you next time. The information provided in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended for the purpose of diagnosing, curing, treating, or preventing any disease. We are functional medicine certified health coaches and not licensed medical professionals. The opinions and advice of guests are their own and also not considered to be medical advice. Always consult with a healthcare professional when making any healthy lifestyle changes. We would love to hear from our mom community. Any wellness topics that are high on your list, please DM us at Functional Medicine Coaching Moms. We can also be reached via email at info at functionalmedicinecoachingmoms.com. You can find Functional Medicine Coaching Moms podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button.